this video I'm going to explain the five factors that determine the entropy of a system. Entropy is defined by randomness and disorder. And this disorder may change depending on some specific factors. These factors are temperature, the physical state, dissolving of a solid or liquid, dissolving a gas, and the atomic size or molecular complexity. A change in any of these factors may increase or decrease the temperature of the system. So I'll study each of them individually. The first factor is temperature. Well, when we relate temperature to entropy, we get that an increase in temperature results in an increase in entropy. Now this is because an increase in temperature results in an increase of the kinetic energy and a higher number of microstates. And if you remember the definition of entropy by microstates, a higher number of microstates results in higher disorder, making it an increase in, in entropy. Now the second factor is the physical state. So this involves also the phase changes between the, in the system. A transition from more to less condensed phase re results in an increase of entropy. The most condensed phase is solid, then liquid and then gas, meaning that going from a solid to a liquid results in an increase in entropy, and going from a liquid to a gas also results in an increase in entropy. So we know right here that the gas has the highest entropy and the solid has the lowest entropy. And this is due to an increase in freedom of motion. A solid has pretty much no freedom of motion. Compar and when compared to a gas, a gas can move pretty much anywhere. So you can just think of a rock when you think of a solid. There's The particles can't really move anywhere. Whereas a gas in a container can just bounce around everywhere. So that increases the disorder of the system. Factors 3 and 4 involve solvation of solids, liquids, and gases, so dissolving them in a solvent. When a regular solid or liquid is dissolved in a solvent, it results in an increase in entropy. However, when you have an ion in a solvent, that will decrease the entropy. And this is because the hydration spheres limit the motion of the ions. So, so the ions will attract the hydration spheres from the solvent therefore having them limit their motion around the liquid or whichever solvent they're present on. The fourth factor, dissolving a gas, says that when you dissolve a gas in a solvent, this, it will de decrease its entropy. This is because it limits the energy dispersal. So we know that gases have really high entropy and when you put them in a solvent, that will lower that entropy because it won't have that freedom of motion as it as it had before. Finally, the last factor involves atomic size and molecular complexity. So bigger atoms will have an increase in entropy, meaning that as you go down a group in the periodic table, the entropy of those atoms or elements will increase. And for the molecular complexity, when you have more complex structures, it leads to an increase in entropy because of a higher freedom of motion. So let's try and picture this last case. So let's compare the disorder between NO2 and N2O4. So these are the two structures. And as you can see, the second structure is more complex, meaning it's going to have a higher entropy. And let's picture why. In the first structure, this is going to be the only possible movement. So this right here, making the bond shorter or longer, or the movement in between the oxygens. Now let's see that for the second structure. So we have the bond length right here, right here, and in all, all bonds, the movement between the oxygens. So you can tell there is more of what happened in the first structure. So when you have a more complex molecule, that entropy will always be higher. 
And those are the five factors that determine the entropy of a system. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it and found it useful. And if you did, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe to see more videos like this one.